that is Apple Daily. iPhone custom icons will no longer bounce via the Shortcuts app. Apple cuts developer tax in half for over 98% of devs. And yes, you can run Windows games and apps on Apple Silicon. We will tell you how. Plus, IK Answers and the Notification Squad. For the latest Apple news, rumors, and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. Thank you, Siri. And if you want to join our Notification Squad, which we'll be announcing at the end of our show, you can like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing. When iOS 14 first arrived, Pinterest got a massive hit of attention. Why? Because all of a sudden you were able to change your icons on your iPhone home screen. Now, it was a very clunky solution. It wasn't what the Shortcuts app was designed for at all. However, a lot of people really wanted to customize the look of it. I think that's kind of died down a little bit now because everyone's realized what an awful solution it was because every single time you launch an app using the Shortcuts, it would bounce you through the Shortcuts app and then onto the app that you're actually trying to open, which made your home screen look great, but it also meant that everything that you did took longer. Well, in iOS 14.3, Apple has addressed this, and instead of bouncing you through the Shortcuts app now, all you will get is that app banner that pops up at the top of the screen, and it's much, much quicker. I think the reason that we're getting that app banner pop up is because they don't want people to be able to replace the icon with an identical icon and be able to be running other shortcut stuff in the background for security reasons without people knowing. So that makes all the sense in the world. Anyway, if you are really into uh, customizing or ruining your home screen, you can now do it a little bit quicker. Apple cuts the developer tax in half for 98% of developers. So Apple has announced to support smaller developers Anyone that is earning less than a million dollars a year from the App Store is going to have their commission cut from 30% to 15%. Now that does cover 98% of app developers in the store, but obviously it won't include people like Epic or Spotify, uh, who are all really sad now because they don't think that's fair, because the Apple tax system is now working more like a tax, where the people that have the most money pay a little bit more. You just can't please some people. And yes, you can run Windows games on your Apple Silicon Mac. And guess what? You don't even need Windows to do it. So I've answered so many questions in the comments about what about bootcamp? But what about bootcamp? Can I run bootcamp? I wish I could run bootcamp. I don't care about bootcamp to be completely honest with you guys. Um, but I know that you guys do and I know that it is important for a lot of people who have specific software they need to run on whatever system they have. So Code Weavers have now just announced Crossover 20, which allows Windows programs to run on Mac OS without actually an install of Windows. Uh, it's based on the open source Wine project, which basically creates an app wrapper around whatever software it is you want to run. And it basically translates in the same way that Rosetta does, as far as I understand it, the Windows commands into stuff that will work natively on the Mac. Now, it's been shown running uh, Team Fortress, which is pretty intense. Is it perfect? No, it's not. But remember, this is the first generation. Apple Silicon's been out for a week. Optimizations will come. Obviously, this is also the least powerful processor that Apple will ever release for Apple Silicon. So I think the future is pretty promising. Go and check it out. There is a free trial of Crossover from Code Weavers. You can grab it from their website. But it is optimized for Apple Silicon, and they are pretty impressed with the way that it's running. Also, bear in mind that the footage that I'm putting on the screen right now of Team Fortress is running on a MacBook Air with a couple of layers of translation going on and no fan, and it's the cheapest MacBook you can buy. In other news, I got a HomePod. We'll be doing a bit more detailed breakdown of it uh, in the next few days. However, it sounds amazing. Uh, the setup was like the smoothest thing I've ever done. So it's very much like setting up an Apple Watch where you just point your iPhone at it and that deals with it. So I think from this as well, I feel like the U1 chips that are in the iPhones, because I think that's what's used for the setup, is based uh, right behind the cameras. So that's kind of the directional thing that it has. Um, I quite like it. It's a really, really cool little piece of kit. The volume at 100% is plenty, plenty loud enough. Like it fills up our kitchen, not a massive kitchen, admittedly. But um, yeah, it's absolutely as loud as it needs to be. Uh, unless you're trying to fill a concert hall or something like that. One question on iCave Answers today, uh, Yaha Kuzba, I think is how you say that one. Uh, iCave Answers, I have the second gen iPad Air, as all Apples, after a few years, same with every iPad and iPhone I've ever had, it does start slowing down. From playing games with no issue to struggling to open TikTok or Google Classroom. 
when every iPhone and iPad came out, they had no issues, but after a couple of years, they start to overheat. Should I get a Pro to future-proof myself, or should I get the Air, since it's cheaper? I'm really on the fence here. So a couple of things to unpack there. The phones themselves don't get slower, the software that you're trying to run on them gets more advanced. So even things like TikTok, Google Classroom, or any of these things, they're not running slower on the same hardware if you were running the same software. So if you were, if you never updated any of your apps from where they were when you had that um, iPad Air to begin with, they would run exactly the same now. There is, there's no fans to get clogged up with dust and stuff like that. The hardware itself doesn't degrade. It's purely that the software gets more and more advanced and adds more and more functionality which basically puts more pressure onto the CPU of an older device. So that just wanted to clear that up. I'm sure you guys understand that, but I just want to make sure that people know it's not like the device being handicapped. It's purely a case of what we're trying to do with it is more advanced now. All of that being said, in terms of future proofing, I would personally go for the iPad Air, which is exactly what I use. Um, because the processor is from this generation, whereas the A12 based chips in the iPad Pros are a couple of years old. The architecture itself, because the, A, uh, the A12Z is an A12X with all of the cores enabled. I would definitely go for the iPad Air if you're looking for longevity at the moment. The performance is basically on a par with the iPad Pros. Um, you don't get the ProMotion and things like that, but in terms of longevity, it's gonna be a better choice. If you can wait, I would wait for the next generation iPad Pros, which will come with the A14X chip. That will be your most future-proof, but it depends if you need something now or if you can wait until maybe March. ESR time, unboxing, as I say, for the notification squad, which is up next. If you want to win any of this stuff, we are going to give it all away at the end of this week, maybe on Monday, actually. I might need to take the weekend to find all the notification squad members. Um, but we've got a whole bunch of stuff. We've got charging accessories. We've got cases and stuff. So this one that we're opening today, uh, I've opened this one already, so it's going to be a little bit easier. But... This little case set, I actually used this clear black case, or actually no, this is the one with the blue edging. Um, I used this the other day and I really like it. But the thing that I really, really liked is this part. So this actually clips onto the front of your uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max, so that when you're applying the screen protector, you definitely get it centered. Because there's nothing worse uh, for someone like me that, you know, really gets irritated by things that are like slightly off center. Than, uh, than a misaligned screen protector. So the pack comes with two screen protectors, glass screen protectors, the aligner, it comes with all the cleaning goodies, and this is the uh, case. I'm interested to see how Apple picks this one up on the camera because I tell you what, the iPhone 12 Pro Max has been pretty astonishing on the autofocus. That's uh, the next ESR. Again, I will chuck it onto the phone. We will get some B-roll on the screen and you can see how it looks. Uh, but it's gonna look a lot like the one that's on there right now. So, Notification Squad, as I say, if you want to win any of that stuff, you need to join the Notification Squad by subscribing to the channel and uh, hitting that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Then let me know in the comments that you've done it so that I can give you a shout out like this at the end of one of the following shows. New members today are The Bullet 2001, Abirup Shum, J-O, Rob o, -O I think you're trying to outdo Jay there, aren't you? Urith Mishra, who's been subscribed since 500, but for some reason didn't ring the bell like a fool. Kiprian Tanana, Caroline Stuff and Things, Likanson, Kujo YYC, and Gman88. I hope I've pronounced those the way that you would expect. Woo! Need to drop my iPad then. I hope I've uh, pronounced those the way that you would expect. If I didn't, uh, tweet me with a little video telling me how to say your name and I will correct it. If you want to hit me up on Twitter, it is iCave underscore David. Should definitely have done iCave Dave, I think. But there we go. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.